Hello friends, welcome to Slide Hunt with the video tutorial on data structures. In our previous tutorial, we introduced you Q data structures. There we learned the features and the operations that are available with Q. Now in this tutorial, we discuss the possible implementation of Q. We can implement Q in two ways, array-based implementation and linked based implementation. Here we will learn array-based implementation. A queue is a linear list of elements in which insertion and deletion can take place two different end. Insertion can take place one end of the queue called rea and deletion can take place other end of the queue called font. Here I'm going to create a queue of integers. So first I'm going to create an array of integers. Here we create an array of seven elements and the name of the array is x. Now we use this array to store q or elements of q. Suppose the array has three elements, three, seven and five. Here we insert the element at right hand side. So rea is at index three and we delete element from the left hand side so font is at index 1. The part of the array from an index marked as font to the index marked as rea is our queue and the rest of the free space in the array can be used to extend the queue. Let's see how to insert an element in the queue. I'm going to insert one. First increment rea by one New rea is at index 4, so insert 1 at index 4. Next, I'm going to insert 9, increment rea by 1, and then insert the element at new rea position. Next, we learn how to delete an element. To delete an element, we just increment font by 1. New font is at index 2. So the element 3 at index 1 is not part of our queue. So it doesn't matter the value at index 1 is present or not. When we use this cell, we just overwrite it. Let's see how to write the algorithm for NQ and DQ operation. First we write the algorithm for NQ operation. This procedure insert an element item into a queue. Before insert an element, we need to check there is any free space in the queue or not. For that, I'm going to write the condition as if rea getter equal to size minus 1. Here size indicates the size of the array. Since array index starts from 0, so the last index will be size minus 1. If rea is equal to or greater than size minus 1, then we write q overflow and return. If this condition is false, that means there is free space in the queue. Now I'm going to check the condition if font and rea both are minus 1. Minus 1 is not a valid index. Here we use minus 1 to check q is empty. You can write here null instead of minus 1. If there is no element in the queue, then we set font and rea equal to 0. And in all other cases, we increment rea by 1. Then we insert item at index rea, that is q rea equal to item, and then return. So this is the algorithm for NQ operation. Let's insert some values to the queue. First, I'm gonna insert 3. First, it check this condition if rea getter equal to size minus 1. No, this condition is false. Then it check this condition if front and rea equal to minus 1. Yes, it is true. And set front and rea equal to 0. Then it comes here and insert item at rea index. So 3 will be inserted at index 0. So this is our queue after inserting 3. Next I'm going to insert 7. This condition is false. 
So execute the else part. Increment rea by 1. New rea is at index 1. So insert 7 at index 1. I'm going to insert another element. Increment rea by 1. Now insert 9 at index 2. So this is our queue after execute 3 and queue operations. Next we will write the algorithm for DQ operation. This post do deletes an element from a queue and assigns it to the variable item. If queue is empty, deletion is not possible. So first we need to check queue is empty or not. For that I am going to write the condition as if font equal to minus 1 or font greater than rare. If one of the condition is true, then we write q under flow and return. If q is not empty, we delete the font element. That is item equal to q font. Then we increment font by 1. That is font equal to front plus 1. After this, we write here a special condition if font greater than rare. If font greater than rare, means q is empty. So we set font and rea equal to minus 1 and then return. Let's delete element from this q. q is not empty so this condition is false. Come here. Delete the font element. Font element is 3. So 3 will be deleted. Increment font by 1. New font is at index 1. Now check this condition, font greater than rea, font is at index 1 and rea is at index 2. So font is not greater than rea, so this condition is false and then return from here. Let's delete another element, delete the font element, font element is 7, so 7 is deleted, increment font by 1, new font is at index 2, check this condition font greater than rea. No, it is false. Now I'm going to delete another element. Delete the font element. Font element is 9. So 9 will be deleted. Increment font by 1. Now check this condition if font greater than rea. Font is at index 3 and rea is at index 2. So font is greater than rea. So we set font and rea equal to minus 1. One obvious question comes to your mind, why we write this condition? Or what happens if we don't use it here? Ok, let me explain. Now I am going to insert an element, suppose 5. First we increment rea by 1. New rea is at index 3. So 5 will be inserted at index 3. Similarly, next element will be inserted at index 4 and so on. But the problem is we can't use this space left side of the front. So space is wasted. That's why we write this condition here. If font greater than rea, we set front and rea equal to minus 1 so that we can use the total free space. This is it. Now we will learn how to write a C code to enqueue and dequeue an element. So let's start. First I am going to define the size using has defined preprocessor. Has defined size 10. This indicates wherever we get size in the program will be replaced by 10. Next I am going to declare an integer array int q and within square bracket I'm going to write here size. To perform in q and dq operation we need two parameters font and rea. Initially we set font and rea equal to minus 1. int font equal to minus 1 and then int rea equal to minus 1. Here we define this statement as global so that we can use this anywhere in the program. Next we write the main function. 